Well, good morning. I think we're ready to start. You all made it through the snow this early. You deserve not to just sit here and wait for other people who may be stuck in the ditch. Um, so welcome. Um, it's a really, really evidence of your commitment that you're here. Um, I certainly thought about turning around this morning several times, but um, I'm glad I'm here. Um, this morning, we have Rondo Cooper for our speaker. Rondo, <laughs> yeah, we're very lucky to have him. I think I think you're going to enjoy the morning. He has a, he is has a master's of social work, and he works with young adult adolescent mental health. So he's got lots of experience with the things that we see in the classroom. And um, with no further ado, I'm anxious to get started, so. Thank you. How's everybody doing this morning? Um, again, I'm gonna set this right here. This is just for questions. If anybody has any questions, then we'll just pass the mic because they're recording this. Um, but <clears throat> first of all, I wanna applaud you all. Can you give yourselves a round of applause because you <laughs> made it here. I mean. That's huge. You made it here. Um, it was rough getting out of our house, so I can only imagine how it was coming out of some of your houses. And Vicki just told me that, that you have people who might be showing up late because they can't get out of their driveways. So I, I applaud you, first of all, for doing that. Um, my name is Rondo Cooper, and I, have, I am fortunately, very fortunate to be married to one of your colleagues, Vicki Cooper. Um, and uh, she, yes, nice that's nice to hear? Okay, yeah, okay. All right, that's points there for me? Yeah. You heard that, right, Vicki? That's points, that's points. Um, we'll be talking about cultural competency today. And our discussion, I, I am very relaxed and easygoing with most of my presentations. Um, PowerPoints are coming so many way in the way because what the most the thing that I like the most is the interaction between people so we'll be moving around we'll be doing some talking um, I have since people didn't show up I have a ton of candy <laughs> um, okay oh, okay I was told that this group liked chocolate am I right about that chocolate but I have sweet tarts I have I have all kinds of stuff but this, I have Skittles, but this is the treasure trove right here, okay? Snickers, all kind of stuff. So we, if we don't do anything else, we're going to get our sweet on, okay? So we'll pass this around. Um, but today, I want us to take a chance. I want us to take a chance. Take a chance to maybe expose somebody, but also take a chance to, to, um, to be changed in the process of interacting. Um, this, is, this could be a charged and weighted down subject, but I don't want it to be that way. Um, I would much rather us really get into a discussion about this because um, it's important. It's important. Um, let me back, back up just a little bit more and tell you a little bit more about myself. I, am, I have a master's in social work. Um, and I've worked with people who have been incarcerated. Um, I do a lot of specialized work with males. Um, I work with um, teens and young adults who deal with trauma issues. Um, but even before that, um, I, was, I was one of your students. My teacher, Mr. Dirks, is here. I was one, I was one of those students who um, I was trying to figure it out. And um, I think God put some angels in my life who kind of helped me out. I came from Ohio, Dayton, Ohio. I came here to play football. So um, at, I think, 18, 18, moved here. And so I struggled with a lot of the stuff that a lot of your past students kind of struggled with. So um, I'm here, and I made it. So I guess what I'm trying to say with that piece is that what you are doing and the journey that we're about to undertake or um, to keep going with, it works. 
it works. If you're looking for a testimony, I'm your testimony. If you believe in your students just a little bit, I'm your testimony. I'm the example. Now, I haven't done everything right, but I'm still trying to do it. And so what you are doing is working, definitely. OK? So um, without further ado, let's kind of dive into some of the, some of the information. We'll talk about cultural competency as it relates to teaching. Um, with this workshop, one of the things I want to do is I want us to, I want to, uh -uh, let me go back one second. I keep it up here. I just want you to learn four things. I'm going to talk about four things. Learn the meaning of cultural competency as it relates to teaching students and instructional design. Understand what it means to be culturally competent in the classroom. Um, become aware of some of the dynamics of cultural boundaries and how they play themselves out in the classroom. And then lastly, to dis discuss how cultural backgrounds can affect our students' participation and then maybe some retention. Um, but before we get going with that piece, I just wanted you to see that. I want to make sure that I understand what departments are here right now. Who hates those opening, say your name, um, what are those, th you know, those, hey, my name is, who, who hates those things? Uh, okay, okay. You can go first then. <laughs> I just want to know what department you're from. Oh, psychology. Okay, okay. And then you're Sandy. Sandy. Me, me and you talked earlier. Sandy helped me out too. Thank you, Sandy. Okay. And then um, Alexis Thatcher, English reading. Okay, okay. Judy Brown, English 097. 097, okay, okay. English psychology. Okay. John Kimberly. All right. Catholic computers. Computers, okay. We can go right here. Yes, I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. All right. Math. Okay. I'm the only not math. You said college success center. Okay. Okay. Math. Math. Okay. Okay. And I can see name tags too. So um, you won't be able to hide because John, I am going to be calling on you. Okay. Um, you know what? I didn't get you two, did I? No. Okay, I got you. Okay, okay. Got you. Okay, all right. I got you two. English. Okay. Okay. Sharon, okay. All right. Okay. Okay, all right. And then, uh, Okay. And got you. Okay. Okay. Hide Hide read. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's interesting because I've heard some of these names before, so um, I definitely see everybody. Okay. Okay. Let me start off with something like this. Who is John? Were you were, any sports when you were younger? Nope. Nothing like that. Great, you're a perfect example then. Great, okay. Um, can you stand up and go stand? You can st that's a, stand right here for me. Right, okay. Now I stole a lot of this stuff from my kids at home. Here you go. Okay, all right, let me see. Toss that, toss that to me real quick. All right, that was good. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Yeah, that was good. That was good. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Lost that to me again. All right, all right, all right. We wear glasses too. Let me do this. Here, put these on. Okay, okay. All right. Well, we're going to start off with you like this. All right. Ready? Hold on. Okay. You ready? Okay. Toss it to me. Okay. Hold on one second. Let's try it again. Okay. All right. 
a little bit more to your right. Ready? Go. Oh, that was better. That was better. Give me a hand. That was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. OK, you can take those, you can take those off. What, what, what did it look like when he was tossing these? What, what, what did it feel like? What did it feel like to you without Dis these? Disorient. Oh, without them? Yeah. Um, fine. Throwing the ball back and forth. Fine without them. Mm -hmm. And what did, what did it look like to you all? Easy, clear, um, fine, right? Now, with the ball, I mean, with the glasses, how did it feel? Uncoordinated. Uncoordinated. Disorienting. Disorienting. Okay, okay. That's, that's, thank you, thank you. Um, I wanted to bring this out because I thought that, hi, I thought that this would be a good example for us to talk about sometimes People rarely see us the way we think we see ourselves. People rarely see us the way we see ourselves. And a lot of times, when we think about cultural competency, sometimes we might think that we're doing it the way we're supposed to be doing it. But we might look to others kind of uncoordinated. We might look a little bit aloof with it. And I'm talking about others, I mean like our students. What, what would that mean? What would that mean in the classroom if something like that was happening? Anybody? Haida. Haida. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, I got these names, so I'm asking. I'm, <laughs> I might have you all kind of move back to one of those tables, too. Get some fill in. That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not very acute with education. Yeah. Like you play ball or whatever. Yes. And it might be totally the opposite. He's never played ball a day in his life, you know. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't get to know him, then I wouldn't have actually known that about him. That's an ex excellent, excellent point. Anybody else? Bart. Yes, yeah, sir. What do you think? Um, you know, being aloof with some of our students in terms of, you know, how we kind of look at them. I just know from on a personal level, I try to not stereotype as much as possible. I might even go in the opposite direction sometimes because of that. Oh, okay. That, it, that's in my mind all the time. Okay. And as students walk in, when the, for example, when the class first starts, I, you can't help but make an opinion just mm. by the way they're dressed, the way they carry themselves, mm -hmm. the way they, their, their, their demeanor. Exactly. And so I try not to. But it's it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Thank you for being honest with that. Peter. It's not because easy it's, because it's, there's, you know, there's a certain stereotype that in my mind that I kind of uh, addressed mm -hmm. to a certain person, and, and when they when they fit that, I mean, some people say stereotypes are there for a reason too. Right. And so that, that's. Right. But I, as a, as someone leading a classroom, I try to make sure that that I try to avoid that as much as possible. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that honesty, especially with that piece, because it's not easy not making stereotypes. Because we all, I mean, not making assumptions about people, because we all do. We all do. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking that uh, the other people mentioned it from, from the perspective of the speakers. I was just thinking more from. I was thinking more from the perspective of the students. If a student sees you as someone who may not have it all together, they may not be so inclined to listen to what you say, uh, try to follow your lead, try to follow your direction. They might be looking for something else. And if you don't fit that, that image that they have in their head, that stereotype that they have in their head, then they, they may be less inclined to, to follow you as, as the leader, as the teacher. The students. The students, That's right. An excellent point. Yeah. Excellent point. Excellent point. Anybody else? Yes. From that same perspective of how students view us as teachers, I think students have stereotypes about what a teacher is, what our expectations are, what we, um, how we're going to treat them, particularly if they have not been treated well previously. Um, and I think as a white woman, 
people of color look at me and expect that I'm going to treat them as a person of color, not just as a person. So Excellent. I think there's Excellent point. play going both ways there. What, what, can you say just a little bit more about them expecting <clears throat> you to treat them like a person of color? That's a, I, I think that was an excellent point that might be. Well, I think people of color have been treated differently throughout their upbringing yes. and particularly by white people. And so there's kind of that built in concept that, oh, she's already stereotyped me or she thinks this of me or she thinks I'm not going to be as good as another student because I'm a person of color and that they expect that. And it's hard to get past that sometimes. And like Bart was saying, I try not to have stereotypes, but they're there and and I get caught in it too, but it, it, it goes both ways. I, you know, I, I appreciate, that, appreciate that because <clears throat> you almost talked about the big elephant in the room, you know, um, is that people of different races or people, you know, people, especially minorities, have been treated in different ways, um, a lot of ways not really good, especially by uh, people, uh, people who are of European descent. So I appreciate that, you know, but that's something, that's the type of stuff that we need to not walk around, you know, um, but that's the type of information and that's the type of risk that we need to take when we're moving through this process. Let's, let's do something really quick. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five tables. Um, up under your candy is a half sheet of paper. It's a half sheet, just a half sheet. Yes. So you know what? Some of them are yellow, but they're they're like this. They're half sheets. Okay. There you go. And what we're going to do is you're going to be tasked to um, do something on there. We'll take about take a couple of minutes to to read it out loud, you know, to everybody, and then um, and then we'll do an activity with this piece. Okay. Okay, looks like we're rounding the bases. Okay. All right, all right. Okay, okay. all right, all right. So let's see. Um, your group, which one did you have? You had the back of the vehicle. Okay, all right, all right. Can you show... Can you sell it to us? Let us let us see what y'all did with the with, with the back of your vehicle. Well, we were commissioned to design the back half of a vehicle that you would never forget. Um, and and knowing that this was going to go all around the world, um, we we got the best engineers possible to put our minds together to design the back half of a vehicle. That's our back vehicle. Um, I mean, this is the back half. Wow, wow, okay. I mean, it's full of detail. Yeah. Trunk there, it's got the tires, it's got 20 seats. So uh, <laughs> you can't see the side, but it's got spinner. Um, you see our lights, barely legal. Um, but it's a nice, beautiful two-seater. Mm. <laughs> Two. I like that, I like that. Okay, all right. Give him a quick, uh, all right. Who had... Who had a front? Oh, bring it up. And then right. put it next to theirs. Well, we decided to take a more retro approach with our vehicle. Nice. Again, we commissioned some of those same engineers. <laughs> better companies. <laughs> and this is what we came up with. We have um, a Mini Cooper. Oh, uh -huh. hey. Yes. Um, and we have our nice little GRCC Rocks decal. Oh. Show prior for our college. We also have our fuzzy dice in the window. Ooh. Um, and I think this is a Cooper that's driving the car as mm. well. Mm -hmm. And we also have a nice flip up light designed with a special um, hot pink lining and the hot pink around the. Oh, yeah. Eight. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Yeah. And I can, 
I can definitely tell that's a Cooper in there because she is sitting close to the steering wheel. <laughs> really close to the steering wheel. Okay. Um, right here. Yes. What did you have? Okay. All right. You can put it, you can put it right there on that board. Yep. Very nice. Give him a round of applause. Who had another front? Who had another front part? Did you have a back or a front? Uh, we didn't have time to figure it out. You, have, you know what? <laughs> looks like a front could be a back. This looks like a front anyways. Let, let's describe this anyways. Um, and they came in like and just got right to it. You want to put it? Yeah, you can put it. Stick it right over there. Doesn't have a name yet. I'll turn it on. I guess we're kind of marketing to design your own car. Right. Right. Oh. Um, headlight in a nice um windshield, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So the headlights, the windshield. We got the good snow tires. I can see that. But yeah. we better make sure, because I heard some people arguing already. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you got snow tires and, OK. So yours is practical, too? Yes. Very practical. OK, all right, all right. What's this right here? Um, Don't know yet. OK. <laughs> <laughs> We're still working on it. Yeah, it could be an antenna. Uh, it could be the car turning. I don't know. I haven't figured that out. <laughs> Partly, yeah, because it was made in three minutes instead of five, so. Okay. Is it camper? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, thank you. Give them a round, because they did. All right. You need to go last? Is that a front or a back? That's a back. Okay. Okay. Well, I, no, I wanted to make sure. 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 Oh, you guys have a back also? Okay. Somebody can put it up right here. Nice. You don't Back half the car. 360 view. With scraping cars in the morning. Today we'll be facing the dime back down. <laughs> uh, big tires, of course, for snow riding and everything. Doors, I'm not sure. Is this a, I don't know if it's going to be a two door or four door because we got it cut off right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Give them a round. All right. And then go ahead. You all can go. We designed a truck, which we think is pretty impressive <laughs> for a bunch of ladies. Oh, wow. Oh, this is, we're going to market this truck in Mississippi where we can go swamping. So we have, this is the back of the... This is the back of the truck here. It's a four by four. Nice. Um, this is that little Kelvin guy, you know, peeing on the Ford side. Oh. And um, we have our giant smiley tire here. These are 35-inch super swamper tires. Um, so we can go out, you know, where the alligators are in Mississippi. And it's got a Duramax diesel engine in it. And we got our NRA sticker, and you can't see it. But, of course, we have our rifle on the back above the window. Wow. Wow. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, so... The big question, you can, you can just set it on one of the tables because we'll pass it around. Um, the big question is this, um, just real quick. What, do, what would it look like if these cars were combined? 
<laughs> you said what? Hot you said a hot mess. And what, I heard somebody over here, what, what did somebody say? Terrible. Pretty terrible. Why would that look terrible? <laughs> oh, you would okay. The Batmobile, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sweet. What else? What else? What else? What would it look like? What if, what if this vehicle was with uh, this GRCC front? What, what would that look like? That would work. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, okay. Let, well, go ahead. I have a couple of comments, if that's okay. Yes. Um, it was Do, can you get the... Um, We first started doing this because we couldn't decide on, is that okay to say this, the back end, if it was the side profile or the back end. So just our group dynamics was interesting to try oh. to agree on that. And that's obviously team working and what the kids do and so forth. Just to try to come to that agreement, we spent probably two minutes at least trying to come to an agreement on how we would do that. Would one takeover, would we all participate? And an interesting thing is you started out the morning talking about stereotypes. Right. And how did that tie into one of our vehicles, you know, where we don't even think about it and we all get what it's saying, but there's some stereotypes even in designing these vehicles. And, and, and all the vehicles, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. It's yeah. kind of like the Mississippi, what, you know, Michigan or the UP or whatever, people have perceptions and it ties into what, even though we just talk about it, we, we still think, think those things without even knowing. Yeah, we do. So we that do. was good Good points this morning, so thank those, you. Those are ingrained. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, now I can leave. Right. <laughs> no, no. Right, right, right. No, you're, you're right. Those things are ingrained in us. And um, despite our best efforts, we see, we see what we see wherever we go. It's like we have those glasses on. And wherever we face, we see that stuff. Um, but that's a good point also because we have to be conscious about the type of glasses that we have on. What is it? What, what else? Anybody else about how... What, is, what, is, what would this talk about, like diversity? I mean, diversity and what else could these cars, this mash of cars, talk about as far as cultural competency? All Say some more about that. All I mean. It's just, it, it, you said there's five tables, and it's just funny to see that everybody did something different. They all put a different design on. They all had different tires or You said they all were different. They're all different. Right. Nothing, I think, I mean, other than a format of a car or a truck or whatever, the same concept, but there's all different aspects to every single one of them. Excellent, excellent. True. Anybody else? Yes. From that same perspective. I'm going to keep passing this mic around. because <coughs> Piggybacking on Kelly's comment that they're all different. Our first response was we could never put them all together. It wouldn't work. And yet they each have something to contribute that if you could put it all together, it would be a snowplow that could go in the swamp that's really cool. That, and if you put together all the strengths, it would be very powerful. Very powerful. Uh, yes, go ahead. Having, having said that, piggybacking on that same idea, I remember a few years back I was going to go to South America, and I was talking to my brother about all the different things I wanted to do. And it was kind of funny. He sort of mocked me a little bit about the idea that I wanted to take my flippers, I wanted to take my bicycle, I wanted to take um, my camping gear, all this different stuff, which would have made it largely impractical. And I think that one of the things that we struggled with as a table was which design to follow. Oh, once, okay. once, once you get going on things, I mean, obviously each person's going to yeah. do their own thing. If you yeah. left it to each one person to do their own thing, that would be one way. But, but as, as, as a group, um, it's, it's harder to come to those sort of um, um, agreement on, on what is going to be the best thing, let alone, let alone a complete agreement where everyone 100% agrees. So there's always going to be a little bit of, of disagreement, take. discord, yeah, and, and give and take, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's consensus. That's coming to that. Consensus. That's what I was looking for. Right, Thanks. right. Yeah. No, right, right. It's, it's, um, consensus is about give and take. There, you know, it's not a, everybody wins, and, um, and in some way everybody loses some stuff, right? 
Sandy, anything that you can think about as far as this piece? Um, I found. Oh, oh the, the microphone. interesting in that um, we said, well, let's let the guys do it because guys draw trucks and cars as when they're children. Oh, wow. And I thought, so yes. our, our yes. very first comment of the whole project was very stereotypical. Mm -hmm. We started there. And that's, and, 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 and you said, do guys do that? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Do guys, guys in the room, do we do that? Kind of socialize, kind of socialize the movement. Okay, okay, but that's 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 a very good point. That's a very good point because those are some of those those are some of those assumptions that we might bring into the classroom, especially when we're working with um, students. That we have to be mindful again about those glasses. But this is great. This is a great discussion. But we need we need all of this because we needed all both of these fronts and we needed these backs to keep us moving with this piece, the cars, because the cars can't go without a front or a back, right? So this was excellent. Um, right, at your, right at your tables, you had, you had a sheet of paper that talked about like a, a quick self-assessment. Did everybody get one of those? No. Oh, I got something right here. I got them right here. Here you go. Yep, yep. Did you get one? You didn't get one. You guys didn't get one. There you go. Did you get one? No. Oh, okay. I need a couple actually. All right. Hey, did you get one? There you go. Everybody got one over here? You want individually or just table? Um individually. Take a take a look at an individual, then discuss it as a table. Did everybody get one of these? Okay. Um, okay. Let's just let's just let's let's just open it up for a larger discussion. Really quick. Um, what did you notice? What did you notice with any anything that kind of jumped out at you when you were kind of looking at this piece? I heard some. I heard some. Please. That's a great point. That's a great point. Okay, Betsy, is yes. that you, you all? You said yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> um, yeah. What? What? At your table, I I I heard something pretty interesting over here. Um, about go ahead. You were talking about um, what's the number? I can't see. Shannon. Oh, Shannon. Okay. Okay, okay. Were you, yes. Yeah, one, one of my students. Um, Where is my. And you read your whole name, and she also named it in the text. And Can you my, say that again for the people in the back? Go ahead. That was back. Hello? Is it on? It probably has to be turned on. It, it shuts mm -hmm. off automatically. Oh, it does. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a student doing that in the hallway. That was funny. Um, I had a student who had an unusual name. My name is unusual. I never see it in books. Well, I take that back. In 1977, Kathleen Woodyus wrote a book with that, the title. But until then, you know, that did not impress me. I didn't like seeing my name in that book. So I never thought names in books meant much to students. And in our particular textbook, there was a problem that had this student's name in it. And she came up to me after class carrying the book and pointing to this, Ms. Goff, Ms. Goff, look, my name is in the book. And until then, I had thought it was just sort of a hokey thing, and nobody else really cared about, you know, my name's in the book. Mm. So here's this math word problem, and her name is in it, and she was just really excited. I think she must have glowed for a week after she found it. Wow. Thank you for that. Thank you. Anybody else? What you might have just might have jumped out at you? Oh, I got name tag. Okay. 
The thing that struck me is the question, do my students perceive me as treating them equally? Okay. And that's that kind of a- big theme at this table. Okay. Well, for me, it's a pet peeve because I don't treat them equally because they need different things. So if I treat, treat them equally, then I'm not being fair. Some students need more, some need different. So that that's jumped a, out at me. That is a great point. That's a great point because when we're working with um, different students, like we said, students have different needs and everybody doesn't get the same treatment in the same way. That's a great point. Roger, what jumped out at you? Well, <laughs> it's on, I think it's on. Um, in looking at this, trying to reverse roles and look at how they're looking at me. Oh, yes. Taking time to try to think that through. Yes. And uh, spent more time thinking that through than we got to spend discussing it after thinking it through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we were all uh, looking at it and trying to come to some conclusions and then discuss it. But um, it's interesting. We see our students from our perspective, and mm. yet uh, even, even if we're trying our best to treat them as they need to be treated, mm. to treat them equally in mm. terms of what their needs are, mm -hmm. um, to not you know, mistreat anyone, they don't always see it that way. One of the things I wrote down is that the, many times they see rules as judgment. Mm. When you have rules for the classroom so that everyone can participate, then they think you're judging a particular person if you ask them to abide by the rules. What's one rule that students might see as judgment? That's, that's a great point. Um, when you're trying to uh, allow groups to work together and then you bring them back to talk as a larger group and you can't get one group to cooperate and quit talking. Mm -hmm. and you have to ask them to please join the larger group now. I like that was tactful. Please join. Uh, yes, yes, I like that. Can you please join the larger group? Right, right, right. No, that's, 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 that's excellent. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, over here. Thank you. Can I sit over here? I would, I would say in advocating for this for the student um I've heard treating them equally based on need mm. um, when you think about that this the students may perceive themselves differently than what our instructors may be assuming uh, or insinuating the need may be and so um, unintentionally I think we could be saying we're servicing our students because we see them having this need but they may not see that need I like that you said unintentionally yeah yeah. I was so profound, I forgot where I was going next. <laughs> um, you asked about a rule that would be perceived as a yes. judgment. Yes, as a judgment. Um, I have a, a student now who has a, a lot going on, and he's told me several times that um, I don't know what he's going through. Um, therefore, my attendance policy is not fair. So mm. he's perceiving me as judging him because I don't know his situation, whereas I have a rule in place for all of my students. So again, he's not thinking I'm treating him equally because he feels he has more going on than everyone else in the classroom. So that's the example that came into That's mind. a great example. That's a great example. What, um, um, we'll talk more about that, but that's a great example. Um, let me pass the mic over this way. That was great. Thank you. Um, I was actually thinking about the equal participation piece. Mm. Um, the uh, question three, if not, um, what might encourage more inclusive participation? And I think um, it, with math, teaching math, there's a lot of students with really a lot of anxiety. And I ask them in the beginning of the semester if they, if me calling on them, you know, promotes anxiety, you know, can they handle it? And then what I've done this semester in particular is I've given them extra credit for posting questions on the discussion board mm. for students that are, you know, a little bit more shy or anxious. You know, I want them to be encouraged to ask questions. And I kind of felt like that during this drawing piece. I mean, I stink at drawing. So I could <laughs> kind of like all of a sudden I related to the anxiety that my students were feeling. And I thought, okay, what would have made me feel more comfortable? I think, you know, 
maybe just encouraging students and giving them more opportunities to ask questions other than the standard, you know, calling on them in class or expecting them to raise their hand oh. when they have no confidence whatsoever, right. I think is really important to just provide more um, avenues um, just to encourage them to participate. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That's an excellent point. Excellent point. Um, yep, yep. We'll do one more and then we'll keep moving. Pass it right over this way. Thank you. There you go. Um, my comment pertains to treating them equally and then also the classroom rules. Mm. Um, I have a particular student who has accommodations and through the disability services. Okay. So, yes, I have to follow them and abide by those rules and give her extra time. Maybe that requires more than some of the other students. And so I know that my students see this happen and they probably think it's really unfair, but then I'm just trying to go buy a piece of paper that's telling me, hey, I need to do this because this student has these special needs. And then the other students are like, well, how do I get those special needs? I think I qualify. And then it goes <coughs> into this whole big thing and the not fairness. But I mean, as a teacher, that's, that's something that you're gonna have to you know, get used to and, and kind of explain to them, well, you know, this student, you know, may need more help than you, but there's also other resources out there that can help you. There are some parameters. So, you have to have yeah. some parameters. Yeah. Excellent point. Excellent point. Um, cultural competency is about awareness. Um, it's about awareness and it's about connection. And I kind of heard that theme with every answer, um, that it was about becoming more aware of not only where you're at personally, but also becoming w aware of where your students might be sitting at. Um, and that's important. That's important. You know, because some of those times we won't be able to address them um, totally how they want to, but, it's, but the first step is being aware. That's what it's about. Um, what I want to do, because time, I want us to keep moving. So at your tables also, um, there are some small envelopes. They're colorful. It might look like this. Okay. Make sure that everybody has one at your table. And then, um, you know what? Let's stand up for this one. Stand up. And then you have a little, a small thing in there, a small um, statement inside your envelope. I want you to, I want you to um, pull that out. And then go find somebody at a different table to go talk to about, about, your, about your little story. OK. Um, Monica. Yes. How was that for you? Thanks. It was good. It OK. Was good. I met Cindy. We met Cindy, <laughs> yep. okay. And okay. we're in the same department. Get out of here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So it was, it was, it was, it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything jump out? Learned a little bit about her. She learned about me. Okay. I'm just moving around because yeah. of the microphone. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, I'll keep moving. I'm going to come back. Hold on to this. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You want me to talk more? You want me to talk about my thing? It, you don't have what do you to. Want me to say? You don't have to. No, no, I, I just wanted to know how it was. I'll come back. I'm going to come okay. back to you. Anybody else? How was it for you? Relaxing. You said relaxing. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? <laughs> oh. Well, even in situations like this where we're colleagues and we're adults and we're mature and we know what we're doing, we still don't know where you're going. But now all of a sudden, we're with someone who's on equal footing with us, with ourselves, and we wow. can be ourselves. And you, you said, you started off by saying it was relaxing. Yeah. Wow, wow, okay, okay. There's not as much tension. There's no expectations, maybe, you know? When you're telling your story. When you're telling your story, you're just talking to another colleague that's on the same level of, as you. Mm. I'm not expected to mm. perform for the class. I'm not expected okay. to, okay? Okay, okay, excellent, excellent. Lisa, how was it for you? 
Well, as always is the case with me, I have no idea what your name is, even though I stood and stared at your name tag forever. I but I can, but I can oh. tell you everything that you told me about your life. That is me. That is me. Oh, that is me. Oh. Kelly. Kelly, I met Kelly. <laughs> Like BF, help, BFF. Help. <laughs> no, it was it was good. It was a nice give and take, and I actually wanted to have a time to switch so I could hear about. I had friends and enemies, and she had teenage years, and we could switch and share that and mm. go have coffee. Okay. Hang oh, out. wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, how was it? Oh, oh yeah. How was it for you? <laughs> um. Yeah, that was on tape too. <laughs> after, after I said <laughs> that was re this record. Um, it was a little awkward because I had to talk about my mother, and you know, it's the qu the question that we had was long. Oh, okay. A lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have to. But do it was all still that. good. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Yeah, we. Otherwise, we, I, we felt like we were going to go a little bit too deep. Okay. But, you know, was your first memory, for your first memory of your mother? I don't know. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah, it's okay. a therapist question. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, anybody else at this table? Okay. I, I had Domingo, and I was really excited, actually, because I see him all the time. Um, and because we're passing all the time, we never really get a chance to communicate on an intimate level, I guess. Um, but I love doing things like this. I mean, I share mm -hmm. all day with my students. I think that's how I get them to open up and mm -hmm. feel comfortable sharing with me. Mm -hmm. It's because I tell so much of my life story to them mm -hmm. to where I think it opens up those lines of communication and trust to where they feel like they can give me the real story of what's going on in their lives. self -disclosed. Because I share yeah. so much about me, my failures, my... You know, I'm the first one. Oops, they cut my water off, y'all. I'm gonna tell you, mm -hmm. in, in 20, 2006, they got me. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> they all laugh about mm -hmm. it. The gas was next, you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, but I feel like if I'm open to them, you know, they feel like they can be open and honest with me. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I loved it, and I had no problem sharing. I had a question about my uh, my family's income and things like that. I think I was rich or poor growing up, and and I was open and honest and talked about my my family situation with them. Mm. So, mm. excellent, excellent. Okay. I'm going to come back here. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of springboard off of what Vicki said, which is um, I actually switched my first envelope. Um, so, and I actually share quite a bit about Cheater. myself. So I'm really, oh, no, I really am really open. I mean, I'm like an open yes. book. Even my students will tell you they probably know more about me than they would like. Um, I'm kind of like Ennis with that. I believe in sharing my experiences. But the very first one I got was... Um, about my childhood friends, oh. and I we I was raised homeless as a child, so I didn't have friends. So it's like that's kind of like a sore spot. So right. it's like ooh, right. and I really wouldn't want to get into a whole story with that. Mm -hmm. So that would that dredges up like painful. So I would think in a classroom, even though I I love this idea, and if I didn't have that experience, I would be like ooh, I would really want to do this in my classroom. I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I, I would also think of the students that maybe have had those experience where they they open this up and they're like okay but my right. mother was killed by her my father or something like that. it's like you know so where you might feel safe in your question and it might feel like this great experience i love my my next one because <laughs> i at least it was very nice and shared hers so we swapped and i felt very great with the second one but i had it was a safe zone for me as opposed to the first question which drudged up things that were painful. So that was my experience. You went exactly the right, everybody did. But that, that moves me into the next piece that I'm talking about, is that um, with cultural competency, when we're being competent about looking at, about being aware and um, being cognizant of other cultures, that it's important to understand that um, we bring in stuff with us, all right? I heard one time that we have two tails. We have a T-A-I-L and a T-A-L-E. The T-A-I-L is that, that's that genetic piece of you that, that's connected. And I always tell the story when, when I'm talking with people that um, this, this hump on my nose, when my first son was born, and there's like, yes, yeah, I was like, shh, shh, shh. I felt his nose. I was like, okay, yeah, he's mine. <laughs> but this is the, I'm just playing, baby, just playing. 
But this, that's that genetic piece of you that you can't get rid of, right? That might be your lips, your nose, your shoulders. You know, it's something that, that's connected piece, that, that connectiveness to us. But that T-A-L-E is that story. That's that piece that we bring in that also goes along with us. And the point that I'm trying to make is that we have to be mindful that our students bring in those stories with them. And those stories, just like our stories, can have an effect about how they choose to interact or how we choose to interact with them. Anybody want to say some more about that? Or Yeah, please. Let me, let me grab the yeah. Thank you for being patient about the microphone, too. <laughs> Is it on? <laughs> she said. Um, I, it, it'll come up. I also couldn't find a partner for a minute and had a little nervous breakdown. Um, and then I talked to Janice. Our offices are next to each other, and we've known yes. each other for a few years. She helped hire me here. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> But well, as we were talking, <laughs> we heard new layers of connection, mm. and that was really nice. It was like, oh, you felt that way too? And just realizing how much we don't know about each other, mm. I think. So it's, it, for me, it was nice, and I can see that for our students, feeling that connection with one or two other people could make a huge difference in how they experience our classroom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you. It, it can make a huge difference. And so we have to keep being mindful about that piece. Let's, because it's early, and I want to, I'm glad that you're being patient with me because I'm trying to keep us moving, um, because I want to be respectful of your time. Um, but one of the things that I want to do next is we often, um, when we're looking at different cultures, and we've talked about it all through and throughout today. We've talked about how um, a lot of us, knowingly and unknowingly, sometimes um, make assumptions about different cultures um, or different groups. So what I want to do is I want to kind of capture some of those assumptions that we might be making about different groups. And around the room, we have, you can see like the, the boards with the paper on them. Um, there's one right back here. But this is what I want us to do. At your table, you have a, we, we set your tables up. So like at your table, you have um, sticky notes. You have a, a pad of sticky notes. And I want you to, as a table, or maybe maybe split, split yourselves up. Um, I might have more sticky notes. Okay, okay, okay. And then I want you to, what I want us to do is, because not just us, but a lot of people make a lot of, assumptions about different groups. So I want you to write down on your sticky notes the assumptions that other people might make about these different groups. We have ESL learners right here. We have spe uh, students with special needs, um, students, a student with a diagnosed mental illness. Um, we have black males over here. We have students that are recently incarcerated. So I want us to kind of move around um, and Put on there, put maybe two, two things that you think that people might think about this particular group. Let's say three. Let's say three. Okay? There's something over by the door also over there. So um, now somebody, do you, you, you want me to put stuff up for you or are you okay? They're going to walk around. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's come back to kind of talk about these. What I need is um, maybe a volunteer to kind of read just some of the sticky notes on there really quick for just one. You don't have to do all of them, just one. Yes. Sure, let's do black males. Um. Often feel isolated, will, me will misbehave, will be weak students, um, angry, intimidating, misunderstanding of social boundaries, violent, gang members, um, using marijuana, hostile, feel intimidated, 
want an easy way to pass. Defensive um, athletes will want to date me. Angry, detached, <laughs> prideful. No, like, no like, <laughs> <laughs> like rap music, um, ghetto, lazy, going to prison. OK, thank you, thank you. Um, can I get somebody, thank you. Can I get somebody to read this one right back here? Just real quick, we're just gonna kind of go through them. Uh, students with special needs, incapable, more work, what can I give them, uh, accommodations, what, limited, lonely, untouchable, how can I help when I don't know what their problem is, what are their needs, mm. they require more attention, they're a lot of work, tests, uh, note taking, how to study, I guess, their work, can't they can't complete the class, favored treatment, they're not smart enough to be successful, how can I help them, work, with double exclamation point, don't, as a rule, ask for help, hmm. or register with special services, more time, special needs positive, they're different and interesting, see what they've accomplished to overcome what they've gone through, negative, they're different, why do they want to be here, they feel entitled to special treatment, they get special treatment, they're demanding, they're high maintenance, they require sensitive teachers, they need more help, they may or they may not know or have access to programs that will help them be successful, unsure about how to accommodate their needs without doing too much for them, are often afraid to say what they need, hmm. special needs are stupid, unwarranted, and get special treatment. Okay, okay. Uh, um, we, we'll just talk about them real quick, but let me keep moving with these. Um, <clears throat> ESL learners, I won't, I, I, I have a tremendous respect for all of, all of the stickers, but just because I want us to get the gist of what's being said, I want to keep us kind of moving. Um, but I saw gifted, slow, um, hard to understand what they're saying. Um, they try hard, um, don't understand me, confused. Um, do they really understand English? Um, do they understand me? Can they keep up? Trouble with reading. Um, we'll have a hard time in class. And I saw slow learners. Hard working. Let me move over here. Students with a diagnosed mental illness. Um, they are crazy. Um, they are danger to the class. Dangerous, scare me, lazy, um, may have trouble staying focused, um, uns I have trouble staying focused, unstable. Um, do I treat them with kid gloves? Um, might freak out at any time. Um, un unstable, family issues. We fear them, don't fit in, very emotionally sensitive. Um, students from rural areas or out of state, out of touch, uneducated, um, can't find their way around, closed-minded, set in their ways, closed-minded, um, ignorant, uh, freaked out by traffic, <laughs> big city shock, uh, clueless, um, need friends here, lost, not used to Western Michigan culture, interesting. I also saw might not have a strong academic background. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, students from lower social economic backgrounds, um, poor study habits, study habits, disadvantage. Did they grow up on government cheese like I did? I remember that cheese. Poor basic skills, uh, bad basic skills, no family support, give up easily. Do they have money for supplies? Bad choices, can't keep up, absent, no supplies, hungry, poor hygiene. Can't or, can't, can't or won't ask for money? And what will others think about them? Minority females, scrappy, bossy, welfare mom, disrespectful, single moms, um, ricochet, Loud, dress too much, easy to provoke, angry, and have an attitude. 
uh, don't want to learn, needy or dependent, great in the kitchen. Um, here we go, non-traditional students. We round it off. Non-traditional students, hardworking, they don't feel comfortable. And non-traditional students can be um, students who we don't necessarily see within that, what was that, 19, uh, 24, um, underprepared, serious about learning, more responsible and motivated, <coughs> lost job, very busy. Um, not smart enough to go to college right out of high school. Work hard to get ahead. I saw old. And then the LGBT community. Confused, isolated, uh, radical, rebellious, whatever. Um, isolated. They're there but invisible. Dressed a certain way. Alienated. Too much. Acts out too much. Feels isolated. Love them. Good attitude. And then students who have been, students who have recently <laughs> been released from being incarcerated. Somebody did that one wrong. Dangerous, <laughs> troublemakers. Um, dangerous or, un, or unstable. Tend to be really focused, dejected, hopeless, violent. May not be reliable. Anger issues. And then we have disrespectful, deserve, consequences and punishment, um, losers, that's all violent, angry, should be locked up. Um, they be, may be more motivated because of their experiences. And then lastly, we have, oh, we did, we did black males already. I think that was everybody, right? That was everybody. Um, this is, this is, this is telling, but what, what um what do you get out of that? What do you what do you see when you hear this? Please. Okay. All right. Um I guess I think okay. that it's nice to see that we're all aware of the stereotypes and these these kind of preconceived notions yes. that are here and especially at a college that's pretty diverse. Um right. and, and so I'm happy to see that because I think that we wrote these down, but hopefully we don't believe or, or can work past some of these beliefs. Because I know like, I, I have a population of students that be, can kind of fall under all these categories. Mm -hmm. And so I have to just meet them where they're at and work with them. Mm. Um, because you, know, you, you really can't start anywhere else. So. Excellent point. Excellent point. Excellent point. A jer the journey of a thousand miles begins with what? The first step. Right? And our first step is about awareness. And so this is, and sometimes awareness doesn't feel good, you know, but we're becoming more aware of our community also. Go ahead, please. I, I think that um, this activity, it, it speaks to the mental models, um, if you will, or the mm. negative mental models um, that's just out there about various, um, whether it's demographics or race or, or, or what have you. And um, I think that's why it's important for all of us in these roles to, to present with a level of open-mindedness so that we're not projecting um, these type of thoughts uh, onto our students. Um, I often say that every day is a, is a chance to make a first impression because it's almost like you, you have to um, use each day to kind of start fresh, to 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 rectify that preconceived notion about who someone thought you were or said said you were. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes. I think there's a certain reality though to the stereotypes and and um and and, and that that is out there. Mm. And and it's it, it, <clears throat> not that every individual matches every stereotype, certainly not, but but there is there is a degree of reality to that, and and as and as teachers and administrators, I guess we would need to be aware of the possibility of people like that and develop skills within ourselves to be able to deal with with people who may be at that particular place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Now the awareness piece. Did you, were you raising your hand or you just, okay, okay. He rose his hand and he did this, you know. That's it. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> but um, that, that, that awareness is, 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 again, that first step. This would be the last, last one, and then uh, unless somebody's dying to say something about this, and then we'll, we'll keep moving with it. Well, as, as with our students, I was quickly trying to make sure I was presentable before I said anything. Um, <laughs> it was, it was um, apparent that most of the comments written down were negative. And um, uh, one of the things that, that hit my mind as I, as I was listening to all of those is, how do I stand in front of a classroom and help uh, all those people that have been hearing those comments about themselves be accepted in my classroom. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me piggyback on what he just said, um, because the, 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 sometimes this stuff can get heady. Right? Um, but the thing, it, in the very beginning, one of the things that I said, um, for those of you who weren't in here, uh, is that I, I came from Dayton, Ohio, 24 years ago? I think 24 years ago, and I came here, um, and I was underprepared um, from high school, came here to play football, you know, had aspirations of going to University of Michigan and, you know, being the man, but I was one of your students. Um, for some of you who don't know, just part of my story um, you know, I was raised in, with a single mother. Um, we, about 13 years ago, my, we found out, I was raised with one of my brothers, but we found out we had another brother 13 years ago. Um, but my house, the house that I grew up in, was the house where uh, the prostitutes came to rest. Our house was like a safe house. Um, I saw the needles and the drugs. I, I had the government cheese and all of that. But I'm, I'm saying all that to say is that <clears throat> I guess if you, if you don't hear anything else from me, the thing that you need to hear is to continue to be courageous to not only face and address your fears, but then also to support um, these students that you work with. I am an example of your work. I am an example of your work. So the stuff that you say and the stuff that you do, it works. Now, having said that, some things we might need to be mindful of. When we talked about the stories. You might have to be mindful about how you interact with certain students, um, male, female relationships, um, all right? You might need to, there are certain ways that you might have to interact with males as opposed to acting, interacting with females. I know for African-American males, one of the things, one of the things for, for some African-American males, I always try to preface myself by saying some because we're not a homogenous group. All of us don't think the same way or, or walk the same way. But what I'm trying to say is um, one of the things with some African-American males Physical proximity is important. Physical proximity to when you're talking to me, um, um, the way that you, the way that you might uh, address me. Now, some of that might be some of that T A L E, some of my own tail that I'm bringing in that might be triggering, you know. But the way that you interact with me can impact the way that I choose to react in your classroom. Yes. Could you give an example of that? Yeah, let me set it again. Um, could you give an example of what you're meaning, oh, please? Oh, please. Um, let's see. Um, when I say physical proximity, we talked about a positive way. You, you said, I think I heard somebody say at this table, hey, um, can you guys join the rest of the group? All right? I think, I think I heard somebody, we were talking about how to get students from, to stop talking. Um, one, now, when you get tired, you probably don't say, I see some people, you probably don't say it as tactful as, as Roger, right? Um, but something could be triggered. Example, um, you might say, 
Hey. Oh, don't point at her. Right, oh, you see, I, I, and I wouldn't even point at her, but it went that way, and she kind of, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, hey, no, 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 but there are some rules, and as a teacher, you have to try to keep control of your classroom. But I'm, I guess what I'm trying to advocate for is to be mindful with how you're doing things. With some African American males, that pointing or that getting in their physical space might be, might be interpreted as being threatening. And that might not just be African American males, that might be males in general. Or it might be females also. I'm, I'm gonna say that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say that. I'm gonna say that also. Um, uh, did, did I'm, I'm gonna wrap. But, but now, when you're dealing with, the better your relationship is, the better you can do with that piece. But that relationship might be on your students' terms. You can't force that relationship. Go, go ahead. I just where, where's this list of rules so we can learn these things? I mean, and there's different cultures, and so if I'm calling on an African-American male in my class, different than calling on an Asian male in my class, different interaction, and if I'm sitting next to a student, one-on-one -on -one interacting, am I invading his space or do I need to get closer in? How do I know, where, is there a list somewhere? <laughs> I, you know what, um, there, there's, I, I'm a come. Did you want to answer answer her question? No, or yeah, something else. I wanted to answer um, her question though, about a, a, just an example. Okay. Of what it looks like. Well, well, the, the, real quick, and then um, I'm gonna bounce around because I I saw. Boom, boom, or boom, boom, boom. Okay, um, but then we gotta move on to our next piece. But this is good stuff. Um, the list of you might ask, hey. Um, are you, you know, are you okay with me? Um, excuse me, you know, is it, you know, hey, um, can we talk outside away from everybody? Because right now, this is what I'm seeing. Um, you might ask. Um, that's a, that's great. No, 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 that, no, no. But that's, but that's, that's the type of risk. Those are the type of risks that you need to start taking with each other um, when you're doing this piece. And that might mean talking with each other about, hey, how, you know, how should I do this? Hey, I have this, this kind of problem. How should, I, how should I address this or how, would, how should I deal with this? So those are the type of risks that I think that within your community you need to start taking with each other to kind of utilize and ask each other this stuff um, real quick because we got another thing we want to move to. So go ahead. Um, I was just going to say I think it works both ways. So being aware of you know, if pointing at a student is going to set them off, but knowing those things about yourself. So oh, yeah. if a student is pointing at me, or just yesterday I had someone say, A-O teach. Okay, that's not an appropriate way to address exactly. your professor. Well, now I'm, I'm taking that into the classroom day after day with that student. So being aware of um, kind of what you're bringing and, and how you're projecting that on those students after those things happen. Excellent point. Go ahead. Just to give way to a little insight um, to the question that was asked, w one thing I think as adults, um, we all may, have be, may be guilty of this in some way um, at, at some point or another is, especially when we're dealing with our students and the ones that are under affirmed hmm. and, and we naturally say, hey, how are you? All of us say, hey, how you doing? How's it going? But we may ask that question, but we really don't take the time to see how they're doing because it was just a natural state of mindlessness um, yeah. that we all kind of carry. Oh, wait a minute, man. You tell me, oh, so I just was saying, I was just. <laughs> we yeah. we right, go right, right into our lesson or we right. go right into what it is. But when you're under a firm or when you, when you have been labeled the way these things have been labeled around this room and someone offers that but then don't take the time, <clears throat> you have already at that point created a disconnect. And now when you go to talk to them, you can't get in this space like, like, mm. like Rondo was saying, or mm -hmm. because unintentionally, again, um, you, you created that divide or that disconnect with, with, with the student. And all you were doing was just a quick greet to get to your lesson with that person because he's not affirmed on a consistent basis. Man, she don't care about me. She just mm. asked but didn't really take the time to see. Excellent point. But I'm going to bring it right over there to you. Let's see how you 
Right. Oh. <laughs> so not a firm. Right, right. Not a firm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. My, my feelings are right now. You know? <laughs> the shoulder, bro. The shoulder. <laughs> no. Um, you know, it's it's difficult for me because I address these topics a little different than I think everybody else in here might do. Um, I've internalized these because I was one of these. <laughs> I was a sticker at some point, mm. and, and still still am. To, to be honest with you, um, I feel that way. Um, this population I relate to so much, like I said, because it's me. I, when, when, I, when I looked at students who have been recently incarcerated, my opinion is different than everybody else's or than some, somebody in here I want to assume, but these are my, my, my best students. You know, I, I look at these like, hey, this is my last chance at it. You know, I've got somebody here teaching me that can relate to me. You know, I, 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 I nurture that. I try to bring that out because they got experiences that are so different than everybody else's, and I, and I, and I do say, hey, Everyone's opinion in here matters. Everybody's got something to bring to the table. Um, so I, I open the table, I, op I open the classroom up for them to express their beliefs, not to say that it's always the right way, um, but I give them the freedom to express their beliefs. And I think their opinion is valued. When they feel like it's valued, then they do open the door. And then you are able to, to, to check them and put them in their place when, when needed. Um, but I do it out of love. I mean, and that's, that's just me. I, I do it because they know that I care about them. I stop them when they get out of, out of line. I don't have any issues with doing so. And they know I'll get in their face if, if, if I have to. But, but I do it out of love. I had a situation yesterday in class where one of my students, um, she just wasn't acting her bubbly self. And right in the middle of my lesson, I just stopped. And I said, so what's up? And she looked up. She says, nothing. I said, no, what's up? And she looked at me, I said, you want to come talk? So we went in the hallway for 30 seconds. And she said, you know, you're the only one to ask me all day what was going on. And you can, if you sincerely care about your students, you can tell their mood swings, what's going on in their life, if something's good. They walk in the door, I said, Jesse, what's up, man? What's up, dog? What's going on? You know, I see you bouncing your walk. What's up? Oh, man. You know, and because I want to know what's going on in their lives, you know, because they feel comfortable talking to me about that stuff, when they do do something out of line, they know I'm checking them because I do care. And they know I care. So I think that's our biggest thing is because I open up so much about myself and they know I'm being real with where I'm at in my life right now and, where, and the individual I used to be. They feel comfortable with me, you know, having almost a fatherly figure and jumping on mm -hmm. them about some of the things or behaviors that they exhibit that I don't think are, are, are at that time appropriate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I've got somebody else right back here. This is good stuff. Thank you. Um, one thing that I struggle with, I think, sometimes is like a lot of my students will email me introdu introducing themselves, and they carry some really serious baggage. And mm. like I had a student just say, you know, I can't afford to get groceries. I mean, he just said this mm. this past week. And I kind of picked up on the fact that he didn't have a calculator, and, you know, I got a calculator for him. I got paper because he was using scrap paper from the recycling, you know, and I got graph paper. And now I know it's, it's now I know that he can't provide for his family. I mean, these are things that are hard to know and hard to deal with when we are caring people. You know, I mean, I have, after we went to that meeting and I found out that only 20% of the, you know, African Americans are males are passing. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to save them in my class. You know, I'm, I just think it sometimes can be stressful with over, you know, worrying and caring and, you right. know, I mean, right. because we all want to help all these kids and, and or adults or whatever. And they're just, I mean, that weighs on me sometimes about what am I doing enough or am I, you know, I don't know. I just don't know if you guys share that same concern, but it is heavy on my heart that, I mean, I had a student who was in human trafficking and she told me this after she was done with my class, but I thought, would I have been able to handle that knowing that about her as a student of mine, I would have been worrying her about her all semester. And I'm just saying there comes, you know, a line that we have to, you know, I can't be buying groceries for this guy, but I want to. Exactly. You know, so, you know, I guess for me, I need some more, role, you know, lines of what I should and should not be doing because I just want to take them all home and feed them and, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. So I don't know if anybody else struggles with that, but yeah. I certainly do. Yeah. Excellent point. Oh, did you want to? Okay. Excellent. Okay. This will be the the um, 
this is some, this is this will be the last comment on this piece, and then we'll kind of transition. But um, I'm hearing some good stuff that um, maybe at some point, and we need to have another conversation about too. So this is great stuff. Mine's real fast. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, I definitely get where you're coming from because just this semester, yes, I know we have attendance policies in our classrooms, especially for some of our developmental classes and the math especially. Um, but my student emailed me saying, I don't have gas money, so I therefore can't get to class. So do I excuse this student? Do I count it as an absent? Do I, you know, what do I do? And in turn, I mean, I went to a counselor and I was like, hey, is there assistance for this? And they go, yeah, they can qualify for bus passes if, if need be. Um, but it did definitely hurt me in my heart because, right. you know, they're trying to be successful in school. They, they're coming for a reason. She wants to come, but she can't because she can't afford gas to put in her car to get here. You know, so I, I definitely talked to her about that and said, well, we do have alternate transportation, but I mean, I don't even know if a bus goes where she lives, so that's mm -hmm. hard too. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely know where you're coming from and it, it's, it's pretty difficult. And then it goes back to what we said earlier, do we treat them equally? Is, mm -hmm. it, a, is it an absent, is it an excuse? How do, you, how do you look at it, so? Excellent, college is hard. College is hard. Um, and sometimes um, it's gonna be difficult. It was difficult for me. And so it's gonna be difficult there are going to be those times when you don't have gas or you don't have food. I remember um, Raymond Noodles. We we used to eat, we were talking about my my friend Donovan and boy we used to eat a lot of Raymond Noodles. Um, and then I don't know if you know about Raymond Noodles, but if you put like a little butter in it and you know chop up some meatballs and stuff like that, boy you gotta you gotta feast. <laughs> and. Uh, Stay focused, right? But um, what I'm just saying is that it's going to be difficult. Um, but this is good stuff. This is stuff that we need to continue talking about. So thank you for taking a risk with that piece. If, if you can hold that, because I, I want, I want, I want her to get this this game, man. Um, I think that this is um, this would be nice to take us to the next leg of this journey. So go ahead. Okay, everyone. We're going to play a game today, and it's a board game. And the first thing I want you to, to do is read the instructions that I just gave you. If you can read just the overview and the um, instructions for players, just read the first two bold headings. All right, um, this game is called Finish Line, and Finish Line is a game we're all going to try to graduate. We're going to graduate with a two-year degree or a certificate. We're just going to get to the finish line. So what I'd like you to do before you start taking everything out of the package, because I see Jan Janice is doing that in the back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'd like you to first take out the game board. If you can, this is your game board. And then when you take out your um, pieces, thank you. When you take out the strips, you're going to have five players. So there's going to be five players and maybe two observers in each group. Don't, don't, when you take, them, take off the paper clips, don't mix up your cards, okay? Your strips. And lay your strips down with just the name on top. All right, so each person gets a strip. You may have two observers, and the observers are very important. So you have five players and one or two observers in each group. You can be whoever. You can be Chuck, Jen, Anita, Kelly. Choose a person. And then choose a game piece. OK, so now that you've chosen a Okay, now choose a game piece. He's gonna help and we're gonna have, yeah. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, we'll send somebody over here. Domingo's gonna help. You can have an extra, that's fine. 
All right, so here's what we're going to do next, English table. <laughs> they never listen. Look, they're still not listening. <laughs> Now, th this is what you have to do. I'm going to help you out just to get started. So everybody choose a piece, star, smiley face, whatever. You start at the beginning where it says start. The next thing that you're going to do, everyone needs to roll so that you can see who's going to go first. So roll the die and see who's going to go first. The highest roll goes first. And, then you, and whoever has the highest roll, they go first, and then you're going to go clockwise, OK? Yeah. Well, let him do it. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say that. Let's go. Don't do the cards yet. Don't even worry about the cards yet. And the cards have to go this way with the face down. So the cards are face down. Each, each of you that has a set of cards, they go face down with the name on top first. So you're not reading anything. OK. So has, it, has everyone established who's going to go first? OK, now listen, everyone, especially the English table. <laughs> now that you've established who's going to go first, you go from that person, you go clockwise, and you just roll. So here's what you need to listen, listen everyone. Once you roll, you're going to roll, and then, you'll, and then you'll choose your own card, your strip. You read it out loud. And sometimes it's going to say that you can move two spaces. Sometimes it's going to say zero, you don't move. Sometimes you might have to move five places back. Just follow the instructions. We're going to try to make it to the finish line in the next 20 minutes or so. All right? But everyone read your card and read it so that everyone can hear you at your table. OK, begin. We, but we, we're going to stop because this is a great activity, but we want to kind of hold it. We have a winner. So if you can give them a, who won? We, got, we had a winner over here. So somebody finished the finish line. So. OK. Um, so now what we're going to do is. Uh, what we're going to do is, here's, here's, the next, here's the next part of our session. What we're going to do is kind of debrief about this, about this game. And then um, what I think what we'll do is we'll kind of maybe encapsulate everything that we kind of talked about today. And then I think we'll be done with this session. So, OK, let's, um, we had observers at just about every table. Can we have the everybody. people who are observing talk about what you observed while, Sandy, were you? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. Um, the first thing I observed is that the students who appeared to get help from somewhere, whether it was a community resource or someone in the high school or someone in the college, they seemed to advance more quickly than those who weren't getting help on the, on the little pieces of paper. OK. All right. I think sometimes what we see as helping the students Okay. might not be helping them at all. Mm. And we're so quick to say, well, just go down to the financial aid office. Well, there's a lot to that for the students to go down to the financial aid office and be able to maneuver it. Mm. And the, the, there's always a language in every profession. And there's a language in learning how to navigate the college experience. That's a great point. Great point. Um, something that I noticed was that it's just like in my class. Everybody seems sort of alike at the beginning, and then pretty soon it's strung out all along the board. Oh. And that's how it looks yeah. in my class, that some people are just moving right ahead, and other people are lagging behind. Um, I also observed, I noticed um, that one Lance, I think, had friends who viewed college negatively while Jen had friends who viewed college positively and they were encouraging, and that made a, a huge impact. Thank you. Observers in the back. Do we have observers over here? 
Okay, I don't know. Um, I do think that having a support system surrounding the students is important, and it reflected it in the game, especially the component of asking for help when you need it, which we have like several posters about that. So um, it's encouraging students not to be afraid to reach out and ask for help, and the ones that did, did better. So the daycare, the daycare also was great. We liked that. Yes. I did see a bias in the game. Every time anybody had a developmental experience, it set them back. And that clearly wasn't true for Rondo. Oh, OK. <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, that's, that's your message to us today, right. that you are the product of some of what we do, and that it brought you it put you on the path to success. Exactly. And so I want to make that qualifier that just because you're in a developmental class doesn't mean you're going to be set back way far. It may be the thing you need to push you forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, real quick before we, I go to the next two tables. Um, when I did this the first time, I want to share that I heard a story um, a couple of weeks ago when Domingo and I were in a session. and. Um, a, the person who was facilitating talked about a student who um, had to take a bus to the daycare and then another bus from the daycare to, to school. And when she got to school, because the bus was late, she was late for class. And when she got to the classroom, the instructor said, you can't come to, I can't let you in because I don't allow anyone to come into class late. And they, she talked about how punitive that is and how sometimes some of our rules are punitive instead of helping our students, they hindered their progress. And she didn't open the door to even talk to the student about why she was late. She just said, no, you can't come because you came late and I'm not gonna let you in. And the student said, why should I even try to come? I, you know, I got up at four o'clock in the morning to get on the bus, take my baby, and then to get here. And it wasn't my fault, the bus was late. So I think that we should be mindful sometimes of some of the rules that we establish in our classrooms and how rigid we are with some of our rules. Um, I noticed kind of the dynamic at our table, and maybe because we're all developmental educators, but we were really pulling for the underdog. So like Lance kept rolling low, <laughs> just stayed right by start, and we were all just like, oh, Lance, I'm so sorry. Um, that was the main thing I noticed, just that there was a real vibe here of go Lance, although he was just not making it. Erica said she was trying to get away from Lance. <laughs> oh, but you can talk. Any other? Okay, you talk. If you want to. No? You always have something to say. No, I can always say something. Okay. Nope. Okay, we have one more. Judy? <laughs> you always have something to say. Oh. Uh, the only thing I have to say is I thought of a. I'm an observer, I'm a player. One of the negatives should possibly be that if you have a night class, there's a lot of stuff that's not open. Tutoring's not open. Financial aid is not open. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that's not open. Wow. And so that in itself can be a setback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as an institution, we might, that's something we may need to look at, is how we can help our night students. It just struck me because Linda had said, you know, just because they're in a developmental class and it takes longer doesn't mean they're not successful. And then we get over here and it's like they're not making it. If they're like the last on the board, our attitude is they're not making it. They are making it. It's just going to take longer. And I think we get too much that attitude that, oh, they're defeated because it's taken longer. But that doesn't, even if they fail once and have to retake it, the point is to make it. You, 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 you'd be surprised how, how much just, uh, hey, you can do it, keep going, or, um, oh, I don't think I'm going to make it. Oh, yeah, you will. You, you'll make it. You'd be surprised about a lot of the research talks about resiliency, and resiliency is that bounce back factor, and about how sometimes it just might take a person just to say, hey, you'll make it, not to baby, not to baby anybody, because this is college, and college is supposed to be tough. Um, well, it was tough for me, but to say, hey, I'm confident that you can make it. 
I know that you can make it. Um, sometimes you'd be surprised at just how much something like that. Michael, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, there was one card that mentioned um, that the president had gotten involved to help out and it made a huge difference. And so to me, it just when administration and faculty work together for the common good of student achievement, um, that makes a huge difference. Um, we, we, um, this, this was great. This was a great activity. Thank you. Um, thank you, Vicki. This was, this was wonderful. And again, I think an activity like this might bring about, um, I think it's going to bring about more discussions with this journey that we're taking together. Um, and I would encourage you all to continue to use each other um, and to talk to each other about this piece. But um, in, in closing, um, we kind of talked about um, that journey beginning with that, that thousand mile journey beginning with that first step. Um, this is probably the first step in a lot of steps that we're probably all gonna take together. Um, it's probably a first step in a lot of many steps that you've already taken. But I just need to say um, that I, one of the things that I really appreciated about today, because I was real unsure, Vicki would probably tell you, that I was real unsure about how I was like, oh, how, do, how am I going to, how am I going to go at this, and how? But I really appreciated the way that we took risks with each other to talk, um, especially with the um, with the assumptions that we put up here. Um, and I want to make sure that we understand that these assumptions, that some of them were, were the way we were kind of thinking, but. A lot of these assumptions in the very beginning, we said, put down the stuff that you think that other people might be thinking. And some of this, this activity, just like the other activities, are designed to make sure that we continue to stay aware of where we're at and where somebody else might be at. All right? And becoming, continuing to be aware of that, that story and that T-A-L-E. Um, I just thank you. Um, continue on your journey with cultural competency. If I can help in any way, um, I didn't put my email up here, but I, I'll make sure that you all get it. But if I can help in any way, um, please, please ask me. So um, thank you very much. Thank you.